Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review, this time of Crank 2 High Voltage. Once again, gotta thank Ilko from the Netherlands for sending me these. One quick note on this Blu-ray, if you ever decide to get it, be warned. Check out forums. Check out Crank 2. If you type on Google, Crank 2 Blu-ray Issues. Seems on a lot of Blu-rays, including this one, when you pop this in, Imagine the screen. It only appear in little box where there'd be footage just in this little hole here. I don't know why. And then something about you in order to fix it, you have to put like a like a USB or something in it. Then I don't really get why. And a lot of people don't get why. Although this did work perfectly on my PlayStation 3. So once again, fair warning, if you don't have something to plug into your Blu-ray player, it won't go to full screen. I, I don't get it myself. I, I don't understand myself. But just, you'll find it on forum stuff, just fair warning. But like I said, this worked well on my PS3, so that's fine. Get into the movie. Well, like the first one, I love the sequel. I agree with Sam Adams of the LA Times. It's like a 1,000 volt shot to the heart. I agree with that. This, to me, is a worthy sequel. To me, it does what a lot of great sequels do. What do I mean by that? It doesn't trash the original. It just, in my opinion, obviously, who the fuck else's opinion is going to be? It's my video. One thing I didn't mention about the first movie was, ah oh man, it's such that that guy died at the end. Jason Statham's character. I didn't mention it because it's not an issue anymore because of the sequel. That was one thing about Craig, oh, I really liked the film, but man, the ending, I wish he didn't die because I liked the movie so much. And I was really into the character, such a badass character. And this solves it. It's like the collection. The one of the only issues I had with the collector was the very ending. Then the collection helps it and solves that. And I think, for me, when I look at a sequel, that's what I prefer a sequel to do. Not like Alien 3, or The Last Jedi, or Kickboxer 2, or Star Trek Generations, where they fuck over previous films, help the previous film. And I think a film like this does that. Aliens. Even though the first Alien, the ending's great, the ending is fine, but to me, Aliens helps it even more. Oh, she she got back, and okay, her daughter's gone, but here's this new person, and maybe something with Hicks, maybe not. With this, it starts right off the bat where, I, I guess, I think it's a couple months later, the end of the first one, John D. Lancey, who was Q on Star Trek The Next Generation, he has an appearance in this as a TV like news broadcaster telling about the events that happened and he even says can only be described as implausible <laughs> talk about the events of the first one so right there you know the directors Nolding and Taylor did the first movie they're in on the joke they know this is implausible they know this is bullshit it is meant for fun and it's highly entertaining and boom what batshit insanity are we going to have for the second film okay doctors they picked them up they're taking out his heart, and they put in this bionic one. And they want to harvest the rest of his organs. They say the dick is next. And he's like, he wakes up, he's like, fuck that. <laughs> he beats the fuck out of these two doctors. Fucks their shit up. Later on, you find out why this happened. David Carradine, he makes an appearance. Uh, this character here, would you barely recognize him with this big old beard? wanted this heart, this famous heart that went through all this and survived the the poison in the first movie, and yet he, it kept going. That must be a great heart. I want that one. So his heart was taken and put with this, but it has limited battery power, so throughout the film he has to keep juicing himself up, not with adrenaline, but with electricity, hence high voltage. I thought that's cool. That's what I want to see in movies. If you don't make insane movies, do them well. 
I want to see insane movies instead of just the norm generic shit. But you also have to do them well. And I think the Creed films, the directors knew what they are and they did them well. These films have to be filled with energy, they have to be fast paced. So that's an hour and 20 some minutes. This is 95 minutes, an hour and 35 minutes with the credits. Let's have, let's be on PC, let's go full tilt booty. Let's have him, you know, shoot some people, blood squibs, get some shotgun fun. This guy's like, fuck you, Chelios. Even the trailer is fun, the Red Band trailer. Like, you watch the Red Band trailer, there's literally a montage of people, fuck you, Chelios, fuck you, Chelios. Hey, puto. <laughs> and what's that? I forget the band. I think it's, I want to say it's Linkin Park. Take it all the way. What the fuck is wrong with you? Put me out of my fucking misery. I mean, I saw that trailer and I went, I like the first one. I can't wait to see this. And sadly, the film bombed. It bombed. It did not do well. I don't even know if it had much of a wide release in theaters for people to see it. And that's why you never are going to get a Crank 3 because the, these films did not make money. Jason Statham would like to do it. I'm sure the directors, I'm sure, would like to do it, but no one wants to fund it. So there you go. But these are just insane. Like when the guy says, fuck you, Chelios, he shoves a shotgun up the guy's ass. <laughs> and gets a, wants an explanation of what the hell's going on. When he gets it's like, here, you keep that. <laughs> the shotgun still up the guy's ass. I mean, he calls Dwight Yoakam, nice to see him back. He does a good job here like he does in the first one. And I, free, I think, yeah, it's this movie where there's a one point where Dwight Yeltrim tells the, this person, is Doc Miles going to have to choke a bitch? <laughs> like, the, like, never think I hear Dwight Yeltrim say that, but it's pretty damn funny the way that the scene was played out. But, I mean, once again, it's that fun, over-the-top insanity where he calls a doctor and you literally see a slideshow explaining what the heart is and what's going on. And just Jesus say, okay, all this stuff you tell me is fucking Greek, Doc. Greek. And you literally did show or showed a picture of a Greek statue. It just, I don't just, I don't know how to explain, just the insanity and the, like the fucking attitude I, I appreciate, I love. Like he's trying to drive, and he's talking to the guy, and the guy's man, fuck that shit, puto, let's race. And Jay stays not paying attention, he crashes through the fucking windshield. He's like, hey, give me, give me a jump, give me some, some of that. And the guy thinks for the car, but he puts one on his tongue, one on his nipples, and you know gets juiced up, and gets an overdrive on his heart, and just running like fucking crazy. He goes to this place, Bai Ling, who's been in other films. She makes an appearance as a girl who immediately gets the hots for Jason Statham's character. You can't understand her, so thankfully they have subtitles. He whips these two guys' ass. Uh, he's dragging and sliding on the side of this car door, trying to get to this guy who thinks has his heart, his real heart. Goes to the strip club, finds Amy Smart there. Corey Haim, he makes an appearance as this guy with like a mullet. And most of the film, he's just getting the shit kicked out of him. Uh, Amy Smart at one point throws him <laughs> at a windshield, like on top of a windshield. The first time Corey Haim, he gets his ass kipped by uh, Jason Statham. This girl for the strip group is like, oh, it's you. They kiss. And even this music. Like, you have this song, gonna keep on loving you. The only thing I'll ever do. <laughs> uh, pretty damn funny. 
you know, gunfight at a club, and literally a woman's tits get shot, but she's not dead because the implants deflate in her fucking chest, and you see a little bit of the, the gel, the implant, coming out of the tit. Ah, uh, yeah. Uber Bowl's Postal was trying to be insane and crazy, but it sucked. It was just more insulting and stupid and unfunny and poorly written and directed. Well, it's Uber Bowl. And just insulting. This was actually fun, entertaining, and well done. This is the good kind of insanity. Polsto with Uber Bowl is the bad kind of insanity. And I know he's trying to go for the craziness of the game, Polsto, because that's crazy too, but... If you, hell, should have the guys who did this to do the Polsto movie. Instead of fucking Uber Bowl. These guys would have made a better Polsto movie. <laughs> I mean, the, hell, these movies are pretty much video game movies, so Polsto would be up, right up their alley. I know at one point, one of these guys, either Neville Dean or Taylor, at one time they were brought in to do a Twisted Metal movie. I don't know what the fuck happened with that. That disappeared. But I would have been curious to see that. But yeah, the gunfight in the club. <clears throat> these cops fuck him up. He gets tased. That electricity sends him in overdrive. Kits all these cops' ass. Even attacks him with the taser. Steals the car. Gets stopped by these porn actors that are on strike. You have appearances by people like even Ron Jeremy makes an appearance. There's one moment that he tries to slide on these rails and he slips and falls on his balls. There's one scene I liked where you have these, these two people in a park and one of those shock collars on this poor dog. This one guy's being an asshole. Keeps shocking the poor dog. And I thought those was cool. Sir. Jason State's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Can't believe you two guys. And he takes the shot car off, puts on them, and he fucking steers the other guy. You don't press that fucking button, you're going in the pot. Press that fucking button. <laughs> and he keeps getting shot, and the dogs look at him like, what the fuck? And then the cops chase him, but the dog gets the cop as if the dog's saying, thank you, Mr. Satham, let me chomp on this cop's balls to help you out. <laughs> Again, what's great about these movies is wondering what the fuck is going to happen next. He gets on his motorcycle with Efren Ramirez, who's like the twin of a uh, guy in the first movie. He's brought to his racetrack. Amy Smart's there. Uh, one of the things the doctor told him is that even body friction can help with static electricity. So, has such... I think really uh, Amy Smart, she's the one who starts to have sex with him in the middle of horse track to help him out. Well, again, what a great girlfriend. Like, this is a really cool girlfriend. Just she's, you know, sticks up for a man, even if you have to fuck in, on a horse track in the middle of everybody. But you know what? <laughs> Big props to that. There's one point he's picked up in this limo, and it's this guy from the first movie who helped him, but then he's a turn going asshole. And this massacre in a limo where he takes a body as a shield, practical blood squibs, shoots them, ba 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 ba. And there's one more he just like this power bridge thing, shots it, gets thrown back. Gets on this ambulance, gets this guy to help him with this little box. And there's running, there's shooting, there's chasing. There's this high voltage plant where he finds this guy. And that's where you get like this nod to the Toho monster movies. Like something you've seen in a Godzilla movie from the 70s. Where like the the voltage plant is miniature. It's like Jason Statham but like a fake head of Jason Statham. The guy with a fake head and they're throwing each other around like a Toho monster movie. And he even does like a... He does like a flying Superman punch. <laughs> then he gets back to reality. He's punch, he punched the shit out of the guy. He gets this cooler who he thought the guy had his heart. 
But he's like, what the hell is this? I am shot to my fucking core. The fuck is that? And they never show us what's in that cooler, so... I guess it's sort of the, the Pulp Fiction thing, where what's in this briefcase? You know, here, what's in the cooler? Never know. Um, they don't really give any hints as to what the hell could be, but I don't know if there's any theories out there. Feel free to share them. And he realized the doc is hey, I was trying to tell you, man, the heart's been transplants in David Carradine's character. And even like this weird thing where he has a flashback to his childhood, like all these words say, fuck you, Chilios, fuck you, Chilios. That flashback to his childhood and he's cussing on this sort of taut show is like Dr. Phil wannabe. Doesn't look like Dr. Phil, but I can't couldn't think of another like therapist type of guy on the show. And when they always said, he did this, again, the insanity, where the guy, the bad guy in the first film, his head is in a fucking water tank, and the guy that he, Chilios cut the hand off and used the hand to shoot the guy in the head, that was one brother. The guy he kills at the end with the, on the helicopter is the second brother, and now his head's in the tank, and our main bad guy here is the third brother. And the shootout happens where the Efron Ramirez and Bailey and others help out. Um, Jason Taylor gets the head out of the tape, fucking kicks him like a football. He gets on this telephone pole and juices him up and he's on fire. And he literally just punching the bad guy to death while he's on fire. And his fucked up head, he thinks Bailey is Amy Smart and you have the return of that gonna keep on loving you and he does you know, sort of the middle finger at the end while he's on fire I, that's almost like you know this to the critics fuck you Chris we'll do whatever the fuck we want and then throughout the end credits you have heart surgery you think it doesn't work but then he opens his eyes you hear a heartbeat so at least by the end of this film Compared to the first film, it's definitely more confirmation that he's still alive. He's probably Dark Man now, since he burned up. Maybe though, you know, he'll be fucking Dark Man, or he's wrapped around bandages, looking like the Invisible Man, but he's still alive. So that was really cool because I like the character. I like these movies. So. If a Crank 3 never happens, it sucks, because I'll, I'll be curious to see what would happen next. At least I know the character, he's alive, he's going to deal with Amy Smart, they're going to go off happily ever after, somewhat. And there you go. But yeah, yeah. considering the last sequels, I would I would be curious if for a part 3. I must admit. If the same team comes back. And if they all don't... And if don't end up in a stupid fucking way. But yeah, this and the first point, they're just sad. I keep saying this because insane fucking movies. There's so much insanity, off kilter humor, absolutely unfucking PC. And it's just it makes me go, what the hell's going to happen next? It's funny, it's entertaining, it's fast paced, tons of crazy. I mean, again, you have John DeLancey, you know, Q from Star Trek Next Generation. One of the first things he says in the movie is on a newscast is the events of the first one can only be described as implausible. I mean, they know what kind of movie they're making, and I'm glad for it. And it works well. It works well because the actors do their jobs well, like Jason Statham, Amy Smart, Dwight Yoakam, uh, Corey Ham, who makes an appearance here. The energetic direction, they keep the movie going at a fast pace. It's not like Machete, where the trailer makes it seem like this fun grindhouse movie, and then a lot of the movies is political talk about the border and the border and the border and the border and the border. Hey, you know the border? Hey, Robert De Niro hates the border. Border, border, border. The fucking movie should have been called The Border, not Machete or Machete. Should have been The Border. And then sequel, The Border Returns or The Border Again. And then the third one, the border in space. 
That's why I don't like Machete. That's one of the reasons, not the only, but one of the reasons I don't like Machete. The trailer may seem like it should be more like these films. And yeah, there's insane stuff, but it's, especially the first Machete. Hey, the border? Yeah, the border. I did about the fucking border. I don't care about the border. Okay? I live in fucking Iowa. Unless it's the border of Minnesota. What do you fuck? Just give me an entertaining fucking movie, which Machete and its sequel didn't, but Crank and Crank 2 did. Rob Rodriguez wishes the Machete films were these movies. That's my opinion. I know people be pissed at that, but it's my opinion. And it's crazy. This came out nine years ago. Because this is a 2009 film. Man, that's crazy. Nine years ago, this came out. But yeah, this and Crank 1 are my favorite Jason Statham films. I don't know which one I like more. I don't know. Maybe I'd give the... I don't know. I, that's tough. I, I like... It's a great double feature. That, I think that's the reason. It's a great double feature. If I gave this the slightest edge, it would just be because at the end of the first film... Yeah, watch it again. It's like, oh, I, I guess... You just see it's a little bit like you see your heartbeat, but it's very, it still is a question mark. Here is it's not a question mark. It is, he opens his eyes, and you hear the heartbeat, so it, it's more clear that, yes, he's still alive. But yeah, this is a great double feature. I wish the studio would give this a better Blu-ray, Lionsgate, because people should not have to fucking guess and see if their Blu-ray will fucking work, and then if it does, we'll put some fucking USB thing in there. I don't know if it's because of the stupid ass... The first BD Live application that allows users to insert and animate shapes, text, audio, and other graphics right into the film to create blogs to share with the other Molot users. What the fuck is a Molot? Sounds like something I took in the fucking toilet! And or Alliance A Live introduces a new BD Live menu system that lets you access exclusive content, special office ringtones, and more. I don't know what the fuck it is, but should have taken that shit out. People would rather have be able to play on your fucking Blu-ray player without this little box that all you can see through, and then all you need a USB or thankfully me the PS3. So, yeah, but yeah. Very fun sequel, entertaining. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. And fuck you, Chelios. See you guys later.